So what is this? And how about this? Is this even a function? What are those greater than or equals doing in the middle of my JavaScript? We're going to be talking about all of this on today's episode of Browser Native. I know a lot of people um, get confused. In fact, I remember when I first started seeing these and I'm like, what the heck is that? I have a, a sample and, and everybody can get to this uh, sample at the URL we'll show on the screen. Um, but at the top, there's a couple of traditional functions. I could not figure out what you call a non-arrow function. It's either a regular function or a <laughs> traditional function or just a function. A they function didn't go back function. and name the old type of function. But anyway, they did not. A couple of um, a couple of traditional ones. The first one is a named function, um, and the second one is an anonymous function that's been assigned to a variable. So kind of similar. Yep, I use both. You do. And I do. Then, I do named functions more often. I think or anonymous functions. Excuse me. You can actually combine them, by the way. You can put a name on your anonymous. Well, it's not anonymous anymore. But anyway, <laughs> um, if it, the advantages in the stack trace will show the names of the named functions. But that anyway, um, the arrow function, um, there's four different formats that I know of anyway. Yep. And you can see them here. So the first one is kind of the whole enchilada. You've got arguments and yep. you've got a little body that you could put as many statements as you want. In this case, we're just returning yep. the sum of these two. I'll, let me just show the result tab. Yeah, it's really simple, right? Yep. Um, it's it's all about just showing the code. And then you, but then if you all you want to do is a return statement, then you yep. don't need the squigglies or the little braces uh, or the return statement. You just put the output value, right? And then if you don't have, if you only have one parameter then you don't need the parentheses right and then if you combine those you get this very very succinct little format which is really useful in things like you know if you're uh, going through an array or doing a map you know yep. and you're just kind of creating a bunch of of little transformations by passing in a function yeah i think that could be super helpful so yeah, so that's that's the main thing. I mean, there's a couple of other little uh, things about them. One is there's uh, the you can't have a name for your arrow function; it's always anonymous, and right. and they don't support the arguments array, which is a little obscure. But if you have a if you have a random number of arguments or whatever a variable number of arguments, you get this array inside of the function. You can't get those inside of arrow functions. Right, right. We had that in .NET too. Yeah. When writing C sharp, you'd have the args from your your host your startup function, and you'd have the args, and you could do something with it. So we're kind of used to having that. I don't know that I've really ever used it in JavaScript. I mean, not that I yeah, not too much. Couldn't it come I just don't often. have it. Yeah, right. I don't have need for it very often. The other big difference is really uh, about the this keyword, which is already confusing. Yeah, and yeah. Um, so I guess I would invite invite people as we go into the second sample here. I would invite people if you'd like to see an entire episode um, dedicated to like what is the meaning of this, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Which, uh, what is the meaning of yeah. this? Yes. Um, you know, drop drop us a comment because I, I I think it's something that confuses a lot of people. In, in any case, this is. Um, you know, somebody had the idea that it was smarter to have the definition of the this keyword inside of a function be determined by how you call the function. So right. it's the opposite of encapsulation. It's like if I had something that was encapsulated and I took a piece out and put it somewhere else just to randomize myself. At least that's the way I feel about it. Yeah. So, so here's an example. Um, here I'm going to add some HTML to the page. And well, that's that's just a little utility function, but um, I'm really going to create a mascot object, and so I'm going to pick on Parker the porcupine, and um, and the PNP mascot. And in a regular function, the this follows the normal binding rules. So get message. If I call it down here, mascot dot get message, right? Get message yep. one. Um, I end up with, you know, here comes. 
and it works. It, it pulls the name out of there. Right. Whereas in the arrow function, let's see what happens. I get back invalid name. Right. And the only reason I get back invalid name is because I set window.name to, to be to invalid, invalid name. name. Because before I did that, I got a big fat JavaScript error, you know, right. undefined, right. right? Right. And so that's an example where it's really, you know, kind of the traditional function sort of works better. It seems to. In um, that example, yeah. In that example. But then there's a counter example that I have, which is based on a callback. And arrow functions are really handy in callbacks. So here I have still window.name is invalid name. But now I'm going to delay showing the output. So set alarm is going to, in one second or however many milliseconds, it's going to display the name. Right. You're saying, hey, I want to time out in this many seconds. And so when it times out, it'll run the function. So we we are calling it from a different context than we were the last exactly. time. Exactly. And that inner function is a trad, is a traditional function. Right. Um, and so this, what happens is that it doesn't work very well because I'll just fast forward to the, hey, invalid name, time to wake up. Why didn't it work? Well, because set timeout, the contents of this is determined by how by what object it was called on yeah and since set timeout doesn't really know about the mascot object right it just sort of doesn't know what to do so it gives you the global object or undefined depending on your what context you and yep. yeah what your strict mode and stuff like that whereas in the second example uh we have a nice arrow function right and that one as you as you saw before, works. And the reason that that works is because the this keyword is based on the outer function. So it's it's sort of being handled the same as a closure. In other words, yep. things that were outside of a nested function are available inside the nested function. Right. And so it, it sort of is more like a familiar to a C-sharp developer. You know, it just kind of seems to work because Parker this dot name, the this was defined right here. Right. And it's well, because you have a traditional function, because set alarm two is that traditional function, like in our last example, it had in our last example, the this keyword was from the object. And so now by using an arrow function in your set timeout, you're getting that this context passed through into that arrow function. So this dot name then means the same thing as it does for the traditional function. That's right. It's it's yeah. it makes perfect sense. Maybe <laughs> well, once once you know what you're uh, what you're doing. Yes, I think it does make perfect sense. But figuring it out maybe not so easy. Do you have any any thoughts to add on all of this? Well, I think one of the the sort of great things about the arrow functions, especially, is when you're using certain frameworks, I'll use React as an example because it's one of the ones I do a lot, you end up having to, um, so for like HTML DOM events, you want to um, call a function from your event. And the this matters in that case because as you were explaining, the the context of this depends on how you're calling the function. And if you're calling it from an event, then the this is the DOM object and not the function that you're in or the class you're in or however you're calling that thing. Exactly. And so by being by assigning a variable, and so we were sort of talking about this beginning, using the anonymous function, setting a, a, um, a variable name, and then setting the variable name as the event target for your event mm -hmm. means that you don't have to do the extra work of binding the function to the event. It just works right in the DOM. So that's a really handy use of arrow functions that I find. And, and it, you also yeah. brought up the map and the, this. those are good examples too, but I love the fact that I can use arrow functions to bind events in HTML. That's handy. Really good perspectives. I agree completely. So I guess I would say uh, if you like this video, please give us a like. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. It'd be great to have you um, get notified of, because we're going to keep creating these, and there's a lot of other great things here on the Voitanos channel. And especially watch the classes video, which is coming up soon. 
where you'll learn how to use JavaScript classes, including arrow functions. functions. <laughs> Great. Hey, Thanks. see you next time. <laughs>